RSV is a common virus that affects the lungs of young children and adults during the fall and winter months. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it is the leading cause of infant hospitalization in the United States. It is estimated that between 58,000 and 80,000 children younger than five years are hospitalized each year due to an RSV infection. If not treated properly, it can become very serious. Hello everyone, I'm Daniela Contreras. I'm here with Dr. Amy Dolinar and Low Health Director of Children's Services to talk about RSV prevention. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Dolinar. Thank you for having me. So let's start with the basics. What is RSV? So RSV is known as respiratory syncytial virus. Uh, respiratory obviously affects our respiratory system, nose, mouth, lungs. Um, syncytial, a syncytium is a big blob. And in this case, the big blob is mucus. And mucus basically collects in our respiratory system, starting at our nose and working our way down. It tends to uh, fill into the lungs. Almost all of us will have gotten RSV by the time we're two years of age. Oh, wow. And usually we treat it as a normal common cold. We cough, we have congestion, runny nose, and then it goes away. With young children, they have small, medium-sized airways. And those airways can become very clogged with that mucus syncytium. And that's what causes the majority of the illness. Oh, okay, very interesting. Is there a difference between the flu or the common cold and the RSV? Yes. So the most common virus that causes the common cold is called rhinovirus. The next most common thing is RSV. But there's multiple versions of each of these viruses. Rhinovirus generally causes runny nose, cough, congestion. And it can sometimes cause a similar symptom to RSV called bronchiolitis, where, where the medium airways can be affected. But it's not exactly the same as RSV. RSV is mo most notorious for causing inflammation of those medium airways, the bronchioles and um, plugging them with mucus. RSV la can last, the cough can last for weeks after the illness itself resolves. Wow, so interesting. So many varieties, yeah. sadly. So you mentioned young children. Who is most as at risk for RSV? The biggest risk factor for RSV is premature infants, children under the age of two, and adults over the age of 60. Um, anybody who has immune compromise, anybody who has a, a lung disease like asthma or chronic lung disease. All those can, um, people are at risk for developing difficulty clearing those airways and inflammation. So does that mean that once you reach two years old, it's kind of like you aged out of it? Well, actually your body just grows. Got it. So as you get bigger, your airways kind of get bigger along with it and, it, and you also get more of an effort a, ability to cough that mucus up. If you have underlying illness though that just weakness alone can affect your ability to cough. Okay. Can you go over the symptoms for RSV? The most common symptoms for RSV are a runny nose, plus or minus sore throat, cough, sneezing, and then wheezing. Uh, this is when it starts to affect the, air, the smaller airways. Um, if you are wheezing really hard or having a hard time moving the mucus, getting air into your lungs, you can develop what's called retractions, where there's the lungs are sucking in, usually at the ribs, uh, and you can see tugging in the, in the throat called tracheal tugging. Those are signs of distress. Other things that children might do is called grunting, where they make a noise that goes, uh, uh. That's, that's them trying to open up those airways. And then sometimes they'll flare their nose. Um, anytime that they do this, they, they use up a lot of their own moisture or fluid is called and it can cause dehydration even though they're drinking well and peeing good they can still be dehydrated just from breathing really fast um, they also as they get sicker and have higher may have low grade fevers you know 100 101 this can also cause them to not want to drink much and and subsequently not pee as much as normal and would would there be a difference between adult symptoms and young children symptoms Adults probably won't have as much um, of the distress or the grunting and flaring. Mm -hmm. They may have more issues with sore throat, and they'll probably be better at keeping themselves hydrated. Oh, that makes sense, because you're an adult. <laughs> if someone suspects that, that their child has RSV, what should they do? So the first thing, RSV is not necessarily a bad thing. Every, like I said, everybody will have it eventually, and, and your body wants to build immunity to it. So it's right. not the end of the world having had it. Mm -hmm. The question is, is your child in distress? 
Um, and if they're showing signs of grunting, flaring, retracting, that's a sign of distress. Uh, if you're just having a simple cough cold, you know, treat symptomatically. Make sure they're getting enough fluid. Make sure they're getting Tylenol and Motrin for fever and pain and rest. Rest is important. Washing hands like crazy is important. <laughs> Everybody in the family needs to wash their hands. If they're able to, teach them how to cover their cough and, and sneezes and try to disinfect surfaces that they're playing or sneezing, coughing on. That sounds very important. So Dr. Dolinar, if someone gets their flu vaccine, will they be protected from RSV? They will not. The flu vaccine protects against the four most common strains of influenza virus, type A. There's usually one, two to three type A and one to two type Bs in the flu vaccine each year, formulated for the most common flu for that year. That does not affect RSV at all. RSV has its own vaccine. In fact, RSV has three new vaccines that were released this year. The first vaccine available for RSV is one for adults for over the age of 60. And if you work with your uh, provider, you can generally get this vaccine at the local pharmacies. The second vaccine available is the one available for pregnant women ages 32 to 36 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, this vaccine will protect the child two weeks after mom gets it. So if she gets the vaccine in the, that 32 to 36 week time frame and delivers before two weeks, that baby is still not quite protected for the for until those two weeks are up. But the baby will still get the antibodies that mom made by getting that vaccine. The third vaccine, or for lack of a better word, is called Bayfortis or Nisirvimab. This is a vaccine or actually monoclonal antibody that has been developed for all children under the age of eight months. It's recommended for all those children in their first RSV season ages uh, between November and April. And it is protective. It's basically you get the antibody to protect against RSV for that year. A child who's over the age of eight months who has increased risk factors like heart disease or congenital um, lung disease or something like that can also get it a second season if they qualify. That is the best way to protect against RSV. But the next best thing we have is symptomatic care. Um, unfortunately, nisirvimab is not readily available in Chico. A few clinics have it, but it's very much on short supply worldwide. We're trying to get it stocked at the hospital, but we don't have it yet either. But the best thing you can do at this point is preventive measures like washing hands and staying uh, away from sick people. Perfect, that's what was gonna be my next question is how can we prevent it if we don't have the vaccine or just in general? In general, so for, this is good for all, all viruses, flu, RSV, rhinovirus, wash your hands, cover your cough, be uh, cognizant of being around other people when you're sick. Try to stay home, social distance. If you have to be out and about and you're sick, wear a mask. Um, and wash hands, wash hands, wash hands. <laughs> wash your hands. Perfect. And why does RSV progress from mild to severe? So it, there's no rhyme or reason to say why one kid might get hospitalized and another might not. It just depends on their ability to fight the infection. Number one is how able are they to cough? If they are smaller, like premature, they're going to have weaker lungs and they're going to have a weaker cough. Mm -hmm. That cough is the most important thing of getting mucus out of the lungs. When mucus collects in the lungs, it can cause inflammation and uh, that inflammation can narrow your airways. Between the collection of mucus and narrow airways, that makes you more likely to get sicker. Um, some children who have prolonged collection of mucus in their lungs can develop secondary infections like pneumonia. Um, that could be of a bacterial origin that, that goes to that mucus and just seeds it. That's just something that sometimes happens and there's the best way to prevent it is to avoid getting sick if you can and mm -hmm. just supportive care in the meantime. Perfect. If they get severe, which I think is your next question, <laughs> what do we do in the hospital? Mm -hmm. So like I said before, if, you have, if your child has those signs of distress, grunting, flaring, retracting, it, that's the time to be seen by your doctor. If you can't get into your clinic, then come to the ER. In the ER, they will test everybody for the viruses. We have a PCR panel that tests for all the different kinds of viruses and, and we'll treat symptomatically. Symptomatically means we support the respiratory system. We give fluids through an IV. We give 
um, medicines like albuterol or hypertonic saline to help loosen those secretions and open those airways. Sometimes none of that works, and we just have to support the airway with what we call high-flow nasal cannula, which is a, a little bit of pressure to help open up those airways. That's what the baby's trying to do when they're grunting. We're doing that for them so they don't get tired out. And if they get sick enough and they are unable to tolerate the high flow or the high flow is not enough support, we can go to a next step, which is called CPAP, which continues pressure for to, again, keep those airways open. And last but not least, if somebody's going into severe respiratory failure, we can always intubate them and put them on a ventilator. That's the last thing we want to do, but it is a possibility. Mainly what we have to do is support that airway until we can get the child through the illness, which can usually last between seven and 10 days. Oh, wow, very interesting. Um, sometimes I've heard that parents are not encouraged to let other people touch their babies. Would you agree with that? So what I tell parents for the first two months, a baby has basically no immune system or the only immune system they have is what they can get from mom through breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. After two months of age, the baby's immune system starts kicking in. So for that first two months, I would be very protective of your new baby. Don't let anybody touch them. Don't let anybody who's sick be around them. And if you get sick, do your best to wash your hands and cover your mouth. The best thing for a baby to prevent illness, though, is breastfeeding. Oh, wow. Because that's, that's giving mom's immunity to the baby. Other than that, as babies get older, they will develop colds. That's their body building the immune system, and that's actually good for them. The, the best thing, though, is to make sure they stay hydrated and that they're getting the rest they need when they have sickness. Perfect. Well, then, is there anything else that you would like to add that I didn't ask you? Um, be conscientious around, of the people around you and... Um, You never know who might have a young infant at home or, or an older uh, adult that lives with them that they're caring for or around. Just be aware. If you're sick, give yourself and everybody else the grace to heal. And, you know, take the time off when you're sick to get better. That's great advice. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Dolanar. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you all for tuning in. If you'd like to listen to more Health Matters conversations, visit www.enlo.org podcast. See you next time on Health Matters.